it's T with T Quilts, and today I'm here to show you how to make quick corners, snowball corners, using the Doug Lico rulers. So the name of the ruler is called Simple Folded Corners and it came in this packaging that was kind of makeshift and I had a hard time getting it out so I can't get it back into the bag because the ruler is a little bit larger and what they have is an opening down here. They've kind of like done a heat seal and then the ruler will stick out of the opening but I can't get it back in the bag. And so you get the ruler. This is the large ruler, and I'm going to talk about the size um, difference when I get the paperwork out. So you have your simple folded corners how-to sheet here, and you can also make them where you can do oversized half skirt or oversized simple folded corners, like snowball corners. And then you can square them up, but I wouldn't want to do that ever. I guess there are some people that want to do that, and so they got instructions for that as well. And then also in the large ruler only, there is also a pattern for the Flying Dutchman table runner, which is this pattern here. And um, so you can also make that if you like so nice to get a free pattern and then I also purchased this same ruler which I have upside down for you guys if you're right-handed you'd be using the ruler like this I'm so used to putting rulers in the orientation that I would use for a left-handed person so in the small packaging I got the same instructions for how to make my blocks here and there was no additional pattern included with the small ruler kit. Uh, the other thing is I purchased both of these rulers because I wanted to work with the small one when I was working with small corners, but also had the option of using the larger one when I was snowballing uh, setting blocks, like for 12-inch squares or such. You can use the large with the smaller, but when I'm in my uh, work area and I have very limited space, I like working with appropriate size rulers, so I tend to buy rulers in different sizes. Now let's talk about what these rulers will, what size they will make. So the smaller ruler will make folded corners that finish at one half inch to three and a half inch. So that means that you can put a piece of fabric that's one inch to four inches on top of something and then sew it together. Then the large ruler here goes from one half inch finished all the way up to six inch finish, which means you can use a piece of fabric that's one inch to six and a half inch to make a folded corner. So I just wanted to clarify that. And remember, when you're doing this, you are using squares for your folded corners. That's where the whole technique comes from, from the squares. So we're going to put this up. We're actually going to be using just a small ruler today. And the reason why I came and did this video is because I am in the process of working with two projects that are using folded corners. And so I thought that I would come show you how to, how to use the ruler and then also... Um, showing you just some of my tips that I've been learning as I've been working with this. So since we're working with a small ruler, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And there may be times when I'm going to be in the camera a little bit, so I'm going to try to tilt you all to this way. So when I have to pull the ruler over to cut or something, then 
uh, you can still see me in the frame so one of the first things that you would probably need to do a folded corner on is when you only need one half square triangle and the traditional method for that you have two ways of doing it is that you could fold the fabric in half like so and then you could just crease it and I don't have a press tool here so I'm not gonna do a heavy press and we're not doing that anyway <laughs> so that's one way you could do it you could also draw a line from corner to corner on the back side of one of your fabrics and then you'd put these two pieces of fabrics right sides together and you would stitch on the line which is fine and then for those of us that like to save our smaller half square triangle piece that we're going to cut off a quarter of an inch away after we stitch we draw a second line a half inch away so that we can sew on that second line so you're you know doing a two-step process if you're actually saving something so what's nice about this ruler I'm gonna have to turn it around because I'm left-handed so whatever part you want to cut away which is going to be this corner here you want this facing that direction of where it's going to cut away so you don't want it on it you want it to face that direction and then they have this line here that goes diagonally through one quarter of an inch away and I am going to put my ruler that line on my ruler and down here at the bottom they tell you if you're doing a whatever size so I'm doing a two and a half inch so I need to put the two and a half inch line on the bottom and to the right of my piece now remember I'm left-handed and now you can see what that diagonal line is now going corner to corner and I'm now able to cut here on the edge of the ruler and let me see if I could do this if I'm right-handed if I'm right-handed I would just turn this ruler around I've got my two and a half inch line down here on the bottom two and a half inch line right here they have the markings on the ruler and then I would be cutting this way but I can't do that <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it back and cut I just wanted you to see that it's a ruler that is flexible for both left and right handed people and then I'm going to cut this and now I have the two sections that I can sew the seam that I need and end up with my half square triangle that I actually need and then this here would be the leftover piece that you can decide whether you want to keep or discard so I am I've done some sewing ahead of time just so I can get through this video pretty fast and then when you press your extra half square triangle open you will end up with dog ears if you don't square it up now you could square these up so that you could use it in a one and a half inch finish half square triangle right now it looks like it's approximately one and three-fourths inch triangle and if you're not gonna square any of them up you just go ahead and sew them um, and then don't square any of them up and you just use whatever size you want but if you need one and a half inch you can always square up so if you're not going to be squaring these units up then go ahead and trim your dog ears while they're flat I just go to the bottom where I did my last stitch I just sit, sit my rotary blade right at that last stitch and just go straight up and then I do the same thing over here last stitch and just stitch that off when I do that I then don't have any dog ears left okay so that's one method that's for making a half square triangle now what if you want to snowball a corner so I'm working on a project where I need to snowball the actual corners and so what I do is I put my fabric down right sides together and say like this one has text on it and I want my text to be right side up I fold my fabric back and if it's not going to be right side up then I don't cut that I keep turning until my fabric when I sew it and flip this part that I'm keeping back is going to be reading right side up if I care so that one was upside down so all I got to do is flip it once twice more 
and then when I flip it back this time you can see now my lettering is right side up if you care <laughs> so I care so that's what I'm going to do so now I've just turned the entire unit because remember I'm left-handed and I want my diagonal line my bias line to be facing what I'm trimming away I'm going to go up here I'm still doing two and a half inch square so I'm lining up my two and a half inch square it's lined up here right there along here and that two and a half inch mark is right along the top as well and I'm going to trim that okay and so again you can sew both pieces or not I'm not going to be showing you those anymore but when you sew this unit together you're going to use your quarter inch seam you flip your seam open and now you've got sorry now you've got your snowball corner here so that's how you do that and if this was a square instead of a half square triangle then you could do that on all four corners if you like you could even make this a square and a square that way but if you have a larger square if you had a larger square say a six inch square and you were using two and a half inch uh, squares then you would have snowball corners now one of the tricky things is when you need units like this like rectangles that you need to snowball and say that I have this rectangle here and I want to make this so that when I fold this back my seam is like this when I snowball that so that's exactly what I do you need to know which direction you want your piece to snowball so that was me just showing it to you in a test but I'm gonna do this how I would do this if I'm working if I want something to snowball this way I put my piece down right size to get well I put my piece down and I'll fold my edge either up or back to see okay that's the direction I want or do I want to fold it this way and go this direction okay so you do have to make sure that you're going to do this in the right direction for my block today I'm wanting this to go in this direction so what I need to do is put my piece on here at an angle and what happens when we normally would do this we couldn't see to draw the line where the piece ended we had to pull it in and then we would draw a line corner to corner then take our piece and put it back and then we would draw a line and you know the drawn line would be there and then we do another half inch mark out here so now I'm going to turn this because I need to get this into cut position now and so then I know I want to trim away this corner so I'm going to place my ruler again now this is a little trickier than the other one because I'm still got two and a half inches here two and a half inch line is along the bottom of my white piece even though I've got this long piece but it's along the bottom of my white piece two and a half inch mark is up here at the top and what you have to look for is that this long piece you just have to imagine that that's going straight up and it's right along that edge so now I can go ahead and trim that and when I sew this together I now have my seam going in the right direction that I need for my block so I'm going to show you this block <laughs> already sewed right there now what if I need the reverse so I'm going to flip this back and just pull it over to the side and so now I have a different unit here and on this unit I need my white to go in the opposite direction so I need this unit to now go in the opposite direction so if this I'm gonna pull the unit that I've already sewn back in so I now want this unit to go di <laughs> I'm not in the camera guys so I'm pulling back in this unit here so I can show you that this unit here is going this way this next unit I want to do in the opposite direction so if I put this unit here and I fold this back on the corner 
you can see the mirror image of the two so always before you stitch make sure because if I put it this way and stitch that corner and pull it back I'm making the exact same unit so let me zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more of this unit here so I don't want to do that I want to actually put it on this side and again always check before you sew and then we're going to sew this seam here and when I'm done I'm going to have a mirror image of that and for this particular block I need mirror images so you do need to pay attention when you're dealing with rectangles you need to make sure that you are getting your angles correct so I'm just making sure everything is lined up here I'm going to put my ruler down so that even though I can't see the bottom rectangle um, the grid marks are helping me on the ruler to know where I need to place that so I cut that off and I'm just going to open this and lay this out so that you can see that they are going in opposite directions when they're sewn here and then I also have that unit for you as well right there two opposites so now I'm gonna sh lay out both of the ones that I just pieced I'm gonna put the black in the same position up and down so you can see how you make mirror images and then you can have this as your reference point oops I moved my other one so sorry so I'm trying to make sure both of these are in the camera here all right so you can see how even when both pieces are laying parallel here to each other here they're going the same direction then you can see where one is flipped where it's coming in the other one is flipped where it's going out and this is a longer piece for my particular block that I'm working on so that's it for this ruler if you got any questions I'll leave them down below if you know of something else that you can do with this ruler that I haven't covered let me know that as well I know on the instructions they do have all of these different shapes here let me pull that up that you can do with this ruler so I do know that you can make a flying geese and things like that with the ruler. I, that's just not the method that I would use to make flying geese. But um, when I need to do snowball corners of stuff like this that are not in my die cutting system, um, then I this is the best method to use it with this uh, simple uh, folded corners ruler. So hope you all enjoy it. Got any questions? Leave them down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.